Now it's time for um, perspective and never ending. It's the short phrase used by a refugee in a song written to sum up her experience as she eventually escaped from her home country and ended up in the Aveyron region of southwestern France. Now the song written in the relative comfort amongst others who experienced well, a similar hell on earth, but have now found a way to survive and hopefully prosper in the future. Our guest today is an award-winning filmmaker whose film Le Chant des Vivants, or The Song of the Living, follows migrants to France who fled from countries like Eritrea, Sudan, Somalia, Guinea, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Celine Allegra joins us uh, here on set. Thanks very much for coming in and talking to us. It's a very personal um, film, isn't it? Incredibly sad stories. Tell us um, a little bit about where these migrants we see in the film have come from and what kind of horrors they've uh, been through. So first thing is that I wouldn't call them migrants, but survivors. You see, migrant is like my grand-grandfather who left, uh, you know, Sicily and arrived in the U.S. with the maximum he had is maybe some uh, stomach ache or a, or a virus of some kind, but not someone who's been deported and tortured in a torture camp because there is no detention camp in Libya. It's all torture camps. Uh, and so uh, uh, we at Limbo, and me in particular, I, I want to call them survivors. Um, and so uh, the, 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 the road is extremely, extremely painful. And you have to know that nobody uh, is, when, 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 while leaving the country, knows what, exactly where they're going. It's, they just rush and, you know, they cross the border. And just after that, they're, they're being kidnapped by traffickers and deported to Libya uh, little by little. But as soon as I cross the border, they're just like sucked into this machine and, uh, and they will never be able to come back, even if they want to. And it's incredibly moving watching the film. It, it, I mean, it brings you to tears at points, doesn't it? Hearing some of those individual specific stories of things that have happened to, the, to those involved. Yes, absolutely. That was the intention, to be honest. I wanted them to have the full attention of the public uh, uh, in a way that really uh, strikes you, even if you're not interested in geopolitics, even if you're not interested in this particular story. Well, via the music, which is a universal language, you will be caught off guard yeah. and you will remember those songs. And if you sing a song about torture and deportation under your shower, well then, this film is, will be a success. It, it will have worked. Well, it, certainly, it certainly does that when you watch it. Uh, tell us about the place where they find themselves, because how on earth does this work? Why did they suddenly finish up uh, in Aveyron? Well, Aveyron is because of me, <laughs> to be honest, because uh, in 2016, I, I, I launched this, I, cre I created this uh, small NGO called Limbo. So Limbo, you know, is this position in which you find yourself in between two worlds, the world of the death and the world of the living. The, the living uh, and you're in between and you cannot find a path back to normality to a normal life and uh, this happened because one of the youngsters that I met in Egypt back in 2014 uh, I managed to make him arrive in France he was you know he arrived uh, via plane so um, but after a few months he just left himself starve uh, on his bed in his uh, you know, shelter. Mm. And uh, he, he's safe, luckily. Uh, but that night I really felt humbled and uh, very much uh, distressed because I realized that um, to survive doesn't mean that you're able to live. And it's just the beginning. And so they really need uh, attention uh, to be able to speak the words and to name what they've been through, which is a detention, not a detention, sorry, but a concentration camp. Mm. And for them, suddenly finding themselves in this place, it's quite a beautiful part of France. I mean, it must be such a culture shock, such an incredible difference in their life? You know, it is, but also it isn't, because they mostly come from uh, country areas. So basically, they find themselves in a very, very familiar place uh, in the end. And uh, that's why it's much easier for them to ad adjust to this environment than, rather than uh, uh, to a city mm. uh, environment. And uh, plus, it's very easy for them to build bridges with the, the inhabitants, the, 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 the persons who live there. And uh, they have been volunteering. I mean, the village of Conk has been volunteering since 2016 to welcome them for 
all of these sessions, and uh, so a very strong bond has been born. You know, has a yeah, has come out of it. Yeah. And as you mentioned before, um, it's very much about the music as well, isn't it? Yeah. The music is what kind of carries them through and, and helps them, uh, you know, get adjusted as well. Absolutely. Well, when you have a very painful, dreadful story, uh, uh, you don't want to tell the story and people don't want to listen because uh, an atrocity victim is disturbing in some, some way. You know, they, they shouldn't speak too loud. And, and music is a very simple way to transform a painful experience into something that is about a hymn, you know, a, a rewriting of, of, of a story of which you will be able to be proud of. And that's a very, very, very big change that happens within a day because basically we discuss in the morning and at night they have their own song and that's great. And you, it's a song that makes you cry, makes you dance, makes, makes you uh, laugh and, and be moved and that's a very amazing things to see and to witness because me, I'm like every other, uh, you know, watch, uh, spect spectator, I'm sorry, you viewers, are, yeah. yes. Uh, I'm moved because a part of this film is not about what I've done or what I'm doing as a filmmaker, it's just about them. So watching the film, you get that sense of optimism as well. Yeah. But what is next um, for these people? Well, uh, of course, they have a very long road ahead uh, to get some, uh, you know, ID and some uh, work permit, etc., and and stay and rebuild their life for good, for good. Because those nightmares, you know, Primo Levi, uh, uh, the, the the Italian writer who wrote about. Uh, concentration camps after the Second World War said uh, the, the, the survivors are, are divided in two. There are those who can speak and those who came back unable to speak because they've seen the Gorgona. So, and this is a, it's a very powerful image to say that if you are able to speak, already you're on the path of getting back your life and of course it's a very long road but um, now they have each other and they have the people around them the the people in at limbo that are absolutely a great team and they can also find a voice when you're syrian you get out of syria you can speak as a people but you you have the whole of sub sub-saharan uh, nations of africa that are on fire and it's, a, it's an illusion to think that they can just, out of nowhere, uh, have the same way of speaking about the experience they've been through, which is a concentration camp in Libya, a huge concentration camp. So they need to be uh, uh, helped in this process in order to say, I'm a victim of a war crime, I'm a survivor of a war crime, and I deserve to be listened to. Running out of time, but let me just ask you very, very quickly in 30 sure. seconds why it was so important for you to, to make this film. For me, it was very important because for 10 years now, I've been trying to uh, find cinematographic ways of talking about this particular issue, uh, which is one that has changed my life personally. And uh, I've been uh, very hurt by the fact that even 10 years after, for me, for something that is a major crime in the Mediterranean, people still say, I don't know. And through this film, I hope nobody will ever be able to say, I don't know, again. Wish you every success with it. Thank you very much for coming in and uh, talking to us. Uh, Cecile Allegra, 